<laughs> I don't mean you have decided to quit. <laughs> Far from it. You may be seated. Thank you. I acknowledge the presence of uh, the uh, of Pastor Martinez from the Philippines and his wife and his son. Amen. Yes, and uh, uh, they have been wonderful and uh, their presence gives us encouragement. They've been a long time in the ministry and they're still here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And um, they will be going away uh, next week. And from there, they will go straight to the Philippines. And uh, I'd like to um, um, ask Pastor Martinez if he could come and just greet the church for just a little. And uh, Sister Martinez could come as well. <laughs> Amen. Just to leave when we go together, I'll just say before I preach, let her give me a 2% inspiration, <laughs> and I will do the 98% perspiration. <laughs> I know if you can just, you want to sing? <laughs> but anyway, you know, we are here together, we are so blessed. I would like to say to everyone that we are a forever student of the Bible. Amen. The longer it takes, the more you see the goodness and the bigness of God. Amen. And as if, it's no way for us to say, I know everything. The more I study the word, the more I could see I'm nothing. That's right. And uh, you know what? I'm so encouraged about what your pastor is doing to duplicate himself, to have many more works to be done in Brisbane because your place is so big. Mm. And I could see that you have only three, I think, three, three works here. And I will encourage everyone, mm -hmm. we are all ministers in the Lord. Yes. You know, I did, I probably I did mention the last Sunday that the poorest man on earth is not those who don't have money nor food. But I could say the poorest people on earth are those people who does not have any dream. Uh -huh. Because I consider my dream... It was 2001 when we said the dream lives on. We call it my dream, our dream, your dream. Yes. Dream, I could say, I have to dream, D-R-E-A-M. Dare to reach everyone with an apostolic message. Ahala. That's a dream. Amen. Good dream. So you need, to, your pastor is telling you and teaching you about this what. You know this what? <laughs> Let's say special weapon. <laughs> so, we have a SWAT in the Philippines. In Tagalog, samahan ng walang awat sa chismis. <laughs> so, these Filipinos are laughing about what I said. <laughs> but I consider it as a SWAT if you have a dream to, to reach everyone with the apostolic message. The SWAT is a special. Uh, it is a soul winning. It is a soul winning with the apostolic techniques. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I will told my I, I told my son, you know what? When you when you when you uh, test uh, when you try to witness, just just like in a form, you have some form of karate. <laughs> There's some form F O R M. I consider this if you witness, try to speak first with letter F. Uh -huh. Try to talk about the family. Uh -huh. And you can see how they respond with the family. Talking about family is not just me. <laughs> <laughs> But talking first to the family, and when the ghost with the conversation, then talks another way, letter O, talk about the occupation. Uh -huh. Then after trying to bait them into another third level, if they just talk to you about the occupation, then goes now to the belief, which is our religion. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, if they try to talk to you about religion, try to make him a little bit, don't ever debate. But uh -huh. too observant. You must be observant uh -huh. in the place where you are visiting. If you are visiting a place with many images, you know exactly they are still mm -hmm. 
a cut leg. But if you cannot see any graven image, then they have step with the Bible. Then it's go on the letter M. F O R M. Now give your message. Amen. Amen. Because it is their bread. So I told my grandkids, you know why we are eating bread in the morning? Because bread means bread means Bible reading enriches any day. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for the privilege. I don't know if my wife could sing or just just say a word. <laughs> She wants to sing. Okay. Any musicians? Uh, I just want to give an encouragement song. Go. Musicians. Musicians. So, my children are singers and doing some instruments. I am the talkers. <laughs> Because Martinez in the Philippines is one of the talking birds. <laughs> I can talk, but they could sing. If I will sing, they will go out. <laughs> Praise God. Sing, Mom. But anyway, my son is here, my youngest son, still available. <laughs> and Yeah, it, when they when when she is still young, I hold him, but now she is now matured. I try to push him. <laughs> push. <laughs> Pray until something happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Key of Z or key of X. Okay. Sing it. Praise the Lord. Then practice namin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I just want uh, first to thank God because uh, how many days my tooth is aching. I went to the doctor and because of abscess. Uh -huh. So I drink medicine and thank God. God heals me. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Before every victory, there's a battle to fight. And before every sunrise, one must live through the night. Before the gray birds open on a resurrection morn, there's a hill to be climbed and a cross to be borne. Oh, Jesus, my Jesus, you know what's best for me. So lead on, my Jesus. ground a grain of wheat is fallen and it's dead but on some tomorrow the hungry will eat bread my sail is torn my little boat us helplessly at sea but how how could I have learned that he rescued one like me so 
so Jesus, my Jesus, you know what's best for me. So lead on, my Jesus, I'll go wherever you lead. So Jesus, my Jesus, For me, so lead on, my Jesus, I'll go wherever you lead. Sing with me. So Jesus, my Jesus, you know what's best for me. So lead on, my Jesus. with the church for a few seconds or yeah. <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you sister Martinez for that lovely song thank you musicians hallelujah and I would like to welcome our visitors this morning Noah, God bless you. Welcome to the church. Anna, as well. Welcome. And uh, the two little kids. I don't know their name, but uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you could come earlier this Sunday, we have Sunday school for you kids. <laughs> they will be taken care of. <laughs> praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I, will, I am also announcing that on the uh, Wednesday of October 19. Oh, why do I speak to this one? <laughs> uh, there will be a uh, teaching seminar regarding domestic violence. Uh, I have attended two of these seminars and they are really good. And uh, according to the statistics that they have shown, domestic violence doesn't happen on the outside, but it is predominant in the church. We just don't realize it that we are experiencing domestic violence at home. And um, it's a good lesson that we will learn. And there are some kind of steps to avoid and to be able to counter this vicious circle in the family so if uh, you could uh, make an effort take a uh, half day off or a day off on this October 19 Wednesday it will be uh, held in uh, Pentecostals of Brisbane um, Pastor Matt Bolton of the uh, what church is that one and he's he's gathered so many information he studied about it 
he's a professional and uh, he could give us some more information. Training seminar will start at 9. 9 in the morning, it will end up at 12. Uh, refreshment and some foods will be uh, offered. So if you could come, give me your names and I will give it to Brother Frank in Mauricio for catering. So that um, he will know the numbers. So um, that will be on o October 19, Wednesday. If you would like to come, you are most welcome. Unfortunately, it will be in, in the Philippines already. So, uh, if you could come, that would be good. Amen? Amen. Okay. Reading from the book of Joshua. Chapter 24. Thank you for standing. Verses 14 to 15. Now therefore fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood. And in Egypt. Serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose you this day. That's why I said I have decided. You have decided. We made a decision. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, Joshua was telling the congregation of Israel, we will serve the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads. Thank you, Lord, for your words. Thank you, Lord, for the people that came. Bless their hearts, Lord Jesus, and not the ears to listen to it, Lord God. Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this time. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. It was a, 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 a moment, time that we had together. In our uh, all-night prayer meeting, it was really good. And I've said, um, we, have, we have paid the price for the supernatural. Because if we pray, continually praying, and if we're going to devote our, our, our lives, our hearts, reading the word, praying, and the things God has given us to follow and to obey, and especially when the congregation come together to pray, and um, the Lord said he's going to do something. He's going to do something. If we ask believing. Without doubting. He will give it to us. And this is the, the, that's the seventh time that we have prayed all night prayer. And of course as I've said number seven is God's number. Something's going to happen. Amen. Something's going to happen. Hallelujah. And I know because it's the Word of God. And if the Word of God says so, it will happen. You know? I always tell, uh, I've been telling you about seven times that servant of Elijah went to, to the mountain and see where there's, there's a cloud that will pour out the rain. And on the seventh time he saw the cloud. And Elijah said, run! For if you don't run, you will be outrun with the flood of waters. Hallelujah. It didn't rain for three and a half years, but when Elijah prayed, when we prayed seven times. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It seems that nobody Amen. is with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And um, I saw the writings on the board with uh, Brother Adrian when I went there yesterday and ble uh, had a... Uh, and to pray about and pray on the house, every room that we prayed. And I saw the one on the board he had written, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. And I uh, was also uh, uh, reading the uh, scriptures that you put in the board. As a uh, last scripture that you put there, I am fully persuaded. I am fully persuaded. 
That's why we made a decision. It was 27 February 1982 that I have made a decision. Like, this just like any other day. Bacolod City, Philippines, 9 o'clock in the evening. The weather was unusual, cool, at 22 degrees centigrade. Windy and dusty. And I'm sorry from the important happenings in my life, other major events took place elsewhere at that particular date. On this particular mo month, the Secretary of State Alexander Haig Six sanctions against USSR and Poland martial law because they have this martial law government. Says Soviets still using chemical warfare in Afghanistan. And there are things happening elsewhere. There, are, there, there was a civil war going on in El Salvador. Rocket 3 was playing in the theaters. Silver Stallone. <laughs> Ronald Reagan was the president. Singer Karen Carpenter dies at the age 32 of heart failure caused by chronic anorexia. Ariel Sharon resigns as Israel's defense minister. General Motors and Toyota sign an agreement to jointly produce a car in the United States. 25th annual Grammy Awards happen on that day. Thriller by Michael Jackson becomes the number one U.S. album. <laughs> Amazing what happened that day. If you could look on the internet, but in that particular day, you could see, oh, these are the things that happened. Man. 11,899 days, goes 32 years, 6 months, 30 days, 285,576 hours, 17,134,560 17, minutes. If you get to seconds, 1,028,073,600 seconds. And counting, ego, I made a single most important decision in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You could count yours as well. <laughs> But that's what happened during that day. February 27, 1982, I have made a paramount decision that changed everything in my life. For it was on this day that I have decided to give my life to Jesus. And although there are some oppositions in me, tries to stop me. Even the enemy uses my wife to stop me. I did not... Give up. Because I have made a decision in my life. And I was baptized in his wonderful name. As the scriptures commanded. This one decision would ultimately guide every one of the hundreds of thousands of decisions I would make for the rest of my life. The decision dictated for me where I would go after that. What will happen to my family relationship? Will I have and what will be my next child? Who my friends would be? Where would I live? What would my career be? What my occupation would be? And ultimately, where would I spend eternity? Hallelujah. That single decision in my life dictates these things in my life. Until now. For eternity. And as I stand here today, I can tell you that that one single decision that I made 33 years ago was the greatest decision in my life. Hallelujah. That one decision has blessed my life in ways I could never begin to explain. The happiest moments of my life have been because of that one decision. Yes, there are ups and downs. But as Pastor Martinez said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 
The joy of the Lord is always there. Happiness is predicated on what is happening in your lives, circumstances, but joy always stays because Jesus lives in your heart. Amen. Jesus lives in my heart. Hallelujah. Amen. That decision was paramount. It was supreme. It was utmost over any one of the hundreds of thousands of decisions I have made before and since then until now. Because of that one decision I've made in my life. Amen. And so are you. If you have made a decision in your life to serve the Lord. To give Him a place in your heart. Not only to accept Him. But to receive salvation in Jesus name. You have made a very important decision in your life. There can, no, there can be no greater decision. One that can make in the life. Than the decision to yield to God's will in your life. Yielding your heart, yielding your mind, yielding your soul, everything in you to the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder today, what's date today? 9 October 2016. I wonder what could it mean to you? Someone here 33 years from now, if the Lord tarries. What would it be? I wonder if you will remember this day. But I did. What life changing decisions could you make that would ultimately affect every decision you make in your life? Whatever it is that you're going to decide. Are you going to decide to marry somebody? Make Jesus number one. The center of your decision. It will affect the rest of your life. Whatever it is that you're going to decide. Is there a possibility that this day could be the day that you will always remember as the day that altered the course of your life? There's a change. There's a change from this day forward. Will this be the day that you remember for all time? As the day that you made the most important decision of your existence. A decision. It is a conclusion of an evaluation. That, that's what it means. It is the outcome of an assessment. You assess everything. You try to evaluate everything and make a decision. It is the verdict of an investigation. You investigated what kind of thing are these that you're going to put in your lives. And you made a decision. It's the finality of a conclusion. Conclusion. It's the point in which one decides. It's a decision and a willpower exercised. A choice of heaven and hell. That's what it's all about. You, not, you don't make decisions here on earth. Everyone makes decisions. Whether you're going to wear red today or not, it's up to you. <laughs> Whether you're going to wear black or, or, or white, it's up to you. But the thing that you're going to decide most in your life is whether you're going to heaven. And you don't want to go to hell. On the day of Pentecost, the, the people asked Peter, what must we do? Wow. All of them there. Because we know that in the scriptures, on that day, 3,000 souls made a decision. Amen. Hallelujah. And they had made a decision that they haven't regretted for the rest of their life. They have died just because of that decision. What, but what a decision they had made. And Peter told them, Repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And on that day, 3,000 souls were saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They have made a decision. I had made a decision as well. When I heard that information and that message from a student. And I was just indirectly listening to him because he was directly witnessing to our one of the employer. No, one of the employee. Sorry. And I was just listening. And after that, I made a decision. You 
You see, Peter could tell them all day long what they should do. Because they asked Peter, what must we do? Because they were pricked in the hearts. They have, they have seen and heard what Peter had, had told them. They have killed their Messiah and their Lord. So they were really guilty of sin. And they said, what must we do? But Peter could tell them all day long what, would, what must they do. But ultimately, it took them to make a decision of what to do concerning the things he was explaining to them. They had to make a decision to follow what it was he was telling them. And it was so many times gone from the pulpit. It was so many times that you heard from any other. The decision to make, you have to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's important to know today that you are the only one who could make that decision. Amen. It's only you and you alone. No one can make it for you. You have to decide it for yourself. If you ask the opinion of other people in your life, it is probable that many of them will not agree with your decision. I decided to give my life to the Lord Jesus Christ today. I decided to get baptized in Jesus' name today. And they will say, Oh, you're cuckoo. Go crazy. Why do you have to decide to enter to the church? Crazy church that goes to church five times a week. <laughs> and then when they go to church, they have a music and they dance. <laughs> well, you know, when you are in shopping center and the music goes there, you go like that too. Isn't it? You're reactive with the music of the world. Why? We have the music in the church, the spirit moving. And, you, know, you know, not all, but some of you just... Like that. Man, I want you to dance in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In fact, after you make this decision, some of them are going to tell you it was the wrong decision. Yes. I have experienced that. But you need to know that it is your decision to make nonetheless. At least you have made a decision in your life. You are the one who will be affected by your decision today. It is your life that you will be changed, that will be changed by it. This decision is yours and only yours to make. There is an old Chinese proverb that says about decisions. A wise man said, he said, a wise man makes his own decisions. An ignorant man follows the public opinion. Wow. You have to make a decision for yourself. Do not view your opinion and decide on the public opinion. If you will decide your opinion on the things that you have heard from God, you are making decision that will be forever. Because the word of God is ever established in heaven. And heaven and earth shall pass away. But his words will never pass away. If you base your decisions on the word of God. It will never pass away. Hallelujah. In this world that we live in. There seems to be a shortage of men and women. Who can make their own right decisions. Public opinion generally decides for as much as, as what we believe. We hear the word from other people. Public opinions. We ask people all the time, what do you think about this? What do you think? Shall I have an open shoes or closed shoes? <laughs> what do you think? Is this good for me or not? You always wanted somebody's opinion. What do you think? You know, do you like my outfit? <laughs> you know, at the restaurant, when you go, you say... What are you going to order? You always, always solicit other people's opinion. I would rather that some, if not many of us, are incapable of making decisions of our own many times. But it takes to alter some people's opinions on something that, you know, even if you are going to hear commercials, 
If you're going to hear television's publication on something, any view of any matter, your tendency is to decide on what you hear and see. Because television feeds your mind, internet tells you what to do. If the advertisement in television says that aspirin is not good for you, you said, oh, okay. But long year ago, he said that aspirin is good for you. But that's what, it, that's what they tell. They said Milo was good, but now if you are going to see television that Milo is not good, because it's just sugar and, 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 uh, and um, not really a good chocolate, but it's a flavoring. Man. And so many things to put up in the, in the, in the um, mass media that they are going to interfere and try to uh, affect your decision. It is important for us to understand here today that a decision can change your life. A decision can change your outlook. Mm -hmm. A decision can change the course of your life. It all takes is one single decision that your life will never be the same. I remember hearing a story in 9-11 when there was a disaster in America. 9-11. This story, story of a man, he decided to stop, buy donuts for the people in his office that day. And bam, his life was spared. That single decision he made, and there are others, if you look at the history of 9-11 disaster, people decided to detour rather than go straight. Decision. That one single decision put him just a few minutes late. That single decision also saved his life. You see, a decision is something that alters the course that your life is hitting. And thank God you have decided to come here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have made a good decision. If you don't like the seat you are sitting in, it all, in, it all takes for you to decide to change position. Isn't it? But you like the seat that you are sitting. So I always sit in this place. It's good. If you don't like the job, you like, you, the, the, the job that you are in, all it takes is a decision to change the situation. If you don't like the direction that your life is going, all it takes to change that situation is a single decision. A single decision can change so much, but what about the most important decision of them all? What about the one that all of the other ones could be dwarfed and come to just nothing? What about the most important decision of your life? Take a look at the book of Joel chapter 3 and verse 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Speaks of our situation today. People are in the valley of decision. And the Lord is coming so soon. And we are still in the valley of decision. Cannot make up our mind. I will serve God or not? I'm going to baptize Jesus' name? Not? Shall I receive the Holy Ghost? Oh, maybe uh, you know, next Sunday? <laughs> the world is stuck between two opinions. God or no God. You cannot mean neutral. There is no neutrality with God. Stuck between two opinions, the world or the Lord Jesus Christ. The tree of life 
or the tree of good and evil. You have to make a decision. This is the reason for so much trouble in the world. When Eve and Adam decided to take up the tree, the fruit of the tree of good and knowledge and of evil. And, and they decided, and the Lord was waiting for them. And the Lord did not slap the hand of Eve when he took up the fruit. And he said, <coughs> and the Lord knew what will happen, up, happen after that day. All these this disasters will come. He knew it because the Lord knows the end from the beginning. He knew that sins will just be as ordinary life they would do. They would, uh, the Lord knew everything that will happen. And yet he said, well, it's your decision. It's your decision. But that decision plants the whole humanity into sin. What a decision. This is the reason people are starving today. This is the reason there is war. This is, the, this is the reason for crime and terrorism. If this world could make this one decision, I want you to know that this world will be a much better place to live. But what about yourself? What about your world? What about your family? What about your workplace? What about your community? That will also be affected by your decision. Psalms 25 and verse 12. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. This verse tells us that when we honor and love God, he begins to teach us the right paths to our lives. Another book says, Proverbs 1, 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. In the other version, it's the beginning of wisdom. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding and knowledge. Because the Lord says everything. And He knows everything. If you have made too many wrong decisions in your life, it may be that you have had some bad teachers in your life. <laughs> there are choices to be made in this world, and it's not just what we wear or what we eat, or whether we'll brush our teeth or not. A lot of decisions. We have to decide what we are going to do about God. It's the most important thing that we're going to decide today. What am I going to do about this God? That Brother Romeo was preaching to me all the time I come to this church. <laughs> Many of us have been wrestling with this conversation for most of our lives. Shall I obey the holiness doctrine that he's telling me about? Oh, hallelujah. There you go again, Brother Romeo. <laughs> but as God made me the watchman, and your blood will be upon mine if I don't teach it, I'd rather say it. I'd rather tell you what the word of God says. You have to decide what I'm going to do with this God that tells me, be ye holy for I am holy. So what shall I do with this God that tells me in his word that it is an abomination for a woman to wear pants? What I'm going to do with this God that tells me that jewelry is just not what the Lord wants in our lives. What I'm going to do with this God that tells me in His Word. Ah, oh, hallelujah. That I have to do it 
to wear above the knee clothes. Plunging and low thing. And expose your your body. What I'm going to do with this God. God has been knocking at your heart's door for as long as many of us can remember. But to this day, some of us have still not decided what to do about Him. I'm just a man here that He, he told me to tell you. What about if God will be the one to tell you? Wow! That would be extreme. Because so many characters in the Bible decided not to follow what God told them to do. Take a look. But there are those who decided to follow what God told them to do. And take a look. Jonah said, oh, I won't obey God. I'll go to, to um, some other place else. <laughs> God said, oh, okay, you're going to run away from me? He told the whale, swallow him. He told the storm, capsize the boat. If God is calling you for the ministry, and we are all ministers, God is calling you. There's a call in your life. And you are not going to do it. You're running away from it. A <laughs> whale will swallow you one of these days. <laughs> Bigger than you are. And then you will decide, Lord, in the, in, the, in the belly of the whale, in the valley of decision. He said, okay, Lord, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Just 40 words, Jonah. Just tell these people of Nineveh. Just 40 words. And they will repent. Hallelujah. Over and over again in our lives, He has been there waiting for us to open our hearts and let Him in. And the only thing that has been standing in the way of our in, enjoy, enjoying the blessings that God has prepared for us is one single decision. One single decision. The person who, who in shaky times also wavers and also and only increases the evil. But the person of firm decision fashions the universe. Author unknown. I don't know who wrote it. The person who in, who in shaky times also wavers. And only increases the evil. But the person of, of firm decision fashions the universe. Wow. <laughs> Too much, isn't it? Now, your ambition today may not be to fashion the universe. <laughs> it's already been there. But what about your world? What about your life? What about your family? What about your children? What about your situation? Could a single decision to be baptized in Jesus' name change the situation in your life? For the single decision that you are desperate said, I want the Holy Ghost. Could change situations of your life? I think so. Could it change the direction that you're going today? Could it cause your life to have a greater purpose? Could it cause you to find the direction you have been searching for? Because only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Yes. Hallelujah. Not the things of this world. Not the power and might and wealth and glory of this world. But only Jesus. Could it give you the meaning you have been so desperately seeking for? I believe it could. Do you believe it so? I could only see a few nodings. <laughs> In fact, I am standing here a living witness of the life changing power of a single decision. I have some testimonies of your life. And you have decided to walk with Jesus 
And you let your decision come to the altar and said, I don't want to drink anymore. I don't want to smoke anymore. I don't want to do these things anymore. And that single decision made a change in your life. And a lot of testimonies you can hear from every saint. That they have made a single decision to change their lives. But I want to tell you this morning, we can always deal with one, with this one, with this some other day. You know. It's supposed to be you're going to decide, but you said to yourself, well, we can always make the decision later. Right? Why? Why be in such a hurry? Or why be in such a rush? We can always do this another day. What about 2 Corinthians 6 and 2? Behold now is the accepted time. Behold now is the day of salvation. For he said, I have heard the Thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have high succor thee. And so many times the word of God has been given. Hallelujah. Is today, is today your day? Is today the day that you will remember for the rest of your life? When we walk about, when we talk about reformation, transformation, revolution, we talk about change. Change. Nothing changes until something changes. And something is never going to change if we don't make a decision about some things in our lives that has to change. And the Holy Ghost was given to you and me for change. And it will give you and me the power to change. Because ultimately when the Holy Spirit is still in you, when the trumpet sounds, you're going to be changed. You're going to be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. I want to make that decision. I have decided. Should be your mantra. You know what the word mantra means? <laughs> Something you coined. You know. I have decided. Should be your song. I have decided. Should be the cry of our hearts. Every time some situation comes against. Our desire to live for God. I have decided. I made up my mind. My heart is set. I have decided to live for Jesus. No matter what happens. Hallelujah. Yeah, what any other person would tell you to do. I have decided. My will is to do his will. Nevertheless at thy word I will do it. Nothing's going to change my mind. I have made up my mind. I will not be distracted. I cannot go back. No regrets. No surrender. And you know what? I'm fully convinced. I'm fully persuaded. And I said to myself that day when I heard the good news. This is it. This is it. I find no fault with Jesus until now. I have found no fault in the church until now. Because the church will be in heaven. Church is predestined to go to heaven. Whether you fall out of church, it's up to you. You make a decision. Because the church will be with God in heaven someday. Hallelujah. The musicians will come. Romans 8.31 What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against you when you, when you decide for yourself to be with God? Romans 8.35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who? Shall tribulation... Or distress. Or persecution. Or famine. When there will be no food in your table. When there will be zero in your bank account. Will you say forget about God. 
or nakedness, nothing to wear to go to church, hmm. or peril, or sword, or bullets, will you decide, ha ha, I will not serve God? Or you will say, no matter what happens, I have made up my mind. I have decided I will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Romans 8. Hallelujah. Yes, clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And continue reading in Romans 8, 37 to 39. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. We are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. For I am persuaded neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. I have decided I have made up my mind. I choose to be with Jesus. I choose that He will be my Lord and Savior of my life. How about you? Have you decided today? Let me give you the last scripture in Mark 10, 29 to 30. If you could stand. And Jesus said and answered, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that has left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, or profession, or whatever it is that tries to hold you down for my sake and the gospels. That he shall receive an hundredfold now and in this time houses, children, sisters, mothers, lands, and all the world will be added unto you with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. Hallelujah. What a promise from the Lord Jesus Christ that when you are giving that decision for him he is going to give you the things that you need in a way he's going to provide you the things that you need in a way hallelujah hallelujah so what you're waiting for make a decision today